Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Let's talk about kids' books. If you're the author of children's books, a book or multiple books, audiobooks can be a great way to share that with your audience. So first of all, just to give you a sense of where we are in terms of the audiobook industry and the kinds of trends that we're looking at, children's books and that audience is definitely increasing. And there's more and more emphasis being put by the audiobook publishers to increase the amount of content available for young audiences. This makes complete sense because the, some of the most uh, prolific audiobook listeners are in that same, in that, that parenting demographic, that age range where they have young kids at home. And so they obviously, you know, it makes sense to share their love of audiobooks with their kids. And just from the perspective of the parents, audiobooks are a great way to be able to enjoy time without it being screen time, right? I know that's an issue for a lot of families these days, but it's a great way to have time. You know, we can be listening while we're eating or doing dishes or gardening with our kids or at bedtime, going to sleep with a nice audiobook to listen to in the dark. The light is not keeping us awake. And this is not in any way to diminish what I would, that high recommendation to read to your children. Absolutely, keep doing that. But this is an additional way that they can be enjoying the spoken word storytelling through audiobooks. So I know that one of the things that sometimes feels like either an obstacle or a reason why a children's author may not want to do an audiobook is because of the illustrations. Illustrations often play a really significant role in a book, and not every children's book is appropriate for audio. But let's think about the enhancement, if you will, of visuals, of those pictures, in relation to audio. In an audiobook, we have a different opportunity to enhance the text. And that's through sound, through music, sound effects, creating a whole soundscape, a landscape of sound for our listeners. So we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna share a few examples of some audiobooks that we have produced for children. Um, the first is one by Susan Pace Cook, her imprint is Get Out Books, and she does some really delightful books that are written for children with wonderful illustrations, and we have converted several of these into audiobooks. Here's one of the first ones that we did for her called um, A Pie for a Pig. Banana by Ms. Peppa Pig. Banana cream tastes most divine. Favorite pie of picky swine. Peach by Ms. Posy Pig. Peach from Georgia is the best. This will pass all fruit pie tests. Strawberry by Paxton Pig. Strawberries stand red and tall. Pride of the country, one and all. Blueberry by Parker Pig. I take blueberry in a flash. Release the rope and make a splash. (laughs) 
as you can hear in this sample, there is lots of use of different kinds of music, as well as sound effects, as well as using the fun of being able to modify the voice for the enjoyment and the, the bringing out of the really the delight of the text and these particular characters. Now, here's another illustration of how we've produced an audiobook for children who are a little bit older, more in the 10-ish uh, range. This is by John T. Olivier, and the book is The Nine Lives and Times of Mr. Hyde. It's a delightful story about a boy and his cat. And this particular scene we're going to share is where we're using music and sound effects to enhance the chase scene or a chase scene within the context of the book. Here you go. I want to stay in my position of safety, but desperately want to know what's happening. I can hear a lot of yelling from the boy as he chases down Mr. Hyde. Moments later, Mr. Hyde streaks across the hallway again and disappears out of my view. The obnoxious one follows moments later and stops conveniently where I can see him. He is a podgy individual and is breathing heavily, his glowing red cheeks puffing in and out as though ready to explode. I hear him say, Oh, get that cat! <sighs> If it's the last thing I do! <sighs> and the way he looks at that moment, it possibly will be. This third example that we have for you is by the author Elizabeth Singer Hunt. And this is her project, Swamp Mysteries. It takes place in Louisiana, down in the bayou. And again, here we're using music and sound effects both for bringing out the enjoyment of the text and really supporting it in the imagination of the listener. What do we do now? Oscar was trying his best to stay far ahead of the Gatlins, but their engine was twice as powerful. Within minutes, they were nipping at our heels. I tried to use my cell phone to call for help, but the crazy weather was upsetting the reception. Let's get back to Evergreen, I yelled. Out of nowhere, the Gatlin's boat showed up alongside ours. It bumped us, causing Oscar to nearly lose his grip. Can't you make this thing go any faster? Asked Jules. I'm trying, said Oscar, but it was no use. Kenny stood up. He looks like he was bracing himself for something. He's gonna jump, shouted Robbie. Hold on, yelled Oscar. Oscar swerved hard to the right, throwing Robbie, Jules, and I to the floor. For the moment, Oscar had prevented Kenny from jumping, but the Gatlins weren't giving up. They were trying to reposition. Up ahead was Evergreen's dock. Oscar headed straight for it. He hooked a hard right and pulled up alongside of it. He quickly killed the engine, and the four of us got out. We ran for the house. Alice! I cried. Gerald! The Gatlins swerved up to the pier, too. They left their boat idling and began to chase after us. Give me that key! Oscar was running just ahead of me. I called out to him. Oscar! I tossed him the key. Oscar caught it like a wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints. Here at Pro Audio Voices, we take a personalized approach to helping you get your project into audio. If you have a children's book and are exploring the possibility of putting it into audio, and you maybe have questions about how to approach it, or does it even make sense for your particular book, these are all things that we can help with at Pro Audio Voices. Just reach out to us at proaudiovoices.com slash get hyphen started, and you can book a call so we can talk. If you'd like to just gather some information from the website, Go to proaudiovoices.com slash children's audiobooks. We're here to help great stories come alive and work with you to help yours have a greater impact in the world. Some of these examples that we've just shared are 
ones where the soundtrack is fairly dense. The music and sound effects are really a very strong part of the overall sound. One of the things that's really, really important when you hire a producer to work with you on your audiobook and you're going to be using music and sound effects is to make sure that the story itself is what stays forefront and that the music and sound effects are not taking over. They're not dominating. And that is a very kind of delicate balance And it's also, that same balance is also impacted by how you listen. And when I say how, I mean on what devices you listen. If you're listening through earbuds or listening through headphones or listening just straight from a laptop or desktop computer, they can come out, the mix itself can sound different. So you'll want to listen on a few different Uh, different devices, and then make sure you've got something that works pretty well on each of those. Okay. So um, I wanted to share one more that we've produced that has a much thinner or much lighter soundtrack where we've just sort of uh, enhanced in a much lighter way. Some projects are more appropriate for this lighter touch. It really depends on the project. So this one is called Excursion to Mars. It's by Christina V. Cuppers. And this is a lovely story for young children about five to 10, about a trip to Mars by the kids in this story. We also have a dog named Rockstar. We adopted him last year from the local pound. Rockstar is very friendly and always excited. When I say that my family is special, I mean that we make all our important decisions together at our family meetings. At least once a month, we sit at the dinner table and discuss different topics, like what we are going to do for Christmas, if we should buy a rabbit or a cat, and where we are going for vacation. We have a special voting system. After a long discussion, Each person writes down their decision on a piece of paper and puts it into a hat. Next, Dad reads each paper aloud. Three similar votes win, but sometimes we have long discussions to reach an agreement. The majority prevails, as we say. We never know for sure who voted for what, but we can certainly guess. Last June, we had a family meeting to decide where to go on vacation. Everyone was very excited. I knew it was going to be a long discussion, so I made lemonade for all of us. Put fancy straws in the glasses and took my seat. So there's one other way in which the audio that can be produced for an audiobook for a children's book can be used, and that's through enhanced ebooks. This is a format that is still available, but it, and it's been around for some years, but I will say it never really fully took off the way people expected it to. These are books that frequently have a read-along component, and they work best if purchased through the iTunes um, uh, application. There are a limited number of platforms that actually support the enhanced ebook format. So you just want to be aware of that going in. And also that uh, there's a tendency, the, tr- the tendency is that the selling price for these projects tends to be fairly low. They're short. You, you know, there's, there's some cost involved to having everything line up. So from a the labor in the technology side of things in the creation of it the production of the enhanced ebook it can it can be expensive so that's something to look at but for some people it is the absolute right option rather than give an example of this kind of audiobook because you wouldn't it wouldn't sound any different the difference is you would actually be able to see the pictures from the audiobook as you go along and typically, as I say, those words are highlighted. So if you're 
teaching someone to read or if you want that kind of support in, with learning to read, that's a great way to help them. And the big difference in the creation of those audio files for enhanced ebooks is that each of the files is created on a page by page basis rather than as one single audio file for the body of the audiobook. If you have questions about this, please let us know. We're here for you. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection Behind the Scenes with the Creative Teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at Pro Audio. This podcast is a part of the C Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.